stupid, <laughs> stupid, stupid man. All right, so last Wednesday, Nancy Pelosi was speaking at a D.C. summit where she noted that the new health care law would let musicians and artists quit their jobs and pursue their dreams <laughs> as the rest of us will be footing the bill for their scabies. Here's the gas bag now, oh. gas bagging. Oh. We see it as an entrepreneurial bill, a bill that says to someone, if you want to be creative and be a musician or whatever, you can leave your work, focus on your talent, your skill, your passion, your aspirations, because you will have health care. Ah! <laughs> so to put it, put it plainly, if you want to play your guitar in the subway, no worries, we got your back. If you want to join a death metal barbershop quartet that plays everything on monkey skulls, that's cool too. If you want to freeze dry your feces, jar it and call it an indictment on the Bush regime, relax you daring artist, we'll pay for your pink eye. This is exactly the news young America needs. With healthcare a non-concern, they can now focus on their crappy Folktronica ambient core tech step. I'm sure their parents will be pleased to know their kids will never get a real job. Look, it used to be that those who embarked on careers in the arts did so because that lifestyle rejected the idea of a safety net. All those other boring farts can become accountants and lawyers, but not that creative soul. He's leaving town with nothing but a guitar, the wind at his back, herpes in his future. <laughs> but when he snubs his nose at the safe and the boring, he also snubs the benefits that come with it. That boring company he mocked happens to provide steady income and benefits. Life on the road doesn't. That's why it's called Life on the Road. Somehow I don't remember Bruce Springsteen singing, Tramps Like Us, Baby, We Were Born to Stay on Our Parents' Policies as Dependents Until Age 26. <laughs> Although that sounds better than the original, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. wow. And if you disagree with me, you're a racist homophobe who won't boycott Arizona. Uh. <laughs> Mr. W.K., I remember when you were just starting out in the late 90s. You didn't take any benefits. You worked like a dog to get where you are. Well, I did benefit from the support of my friends and family. I did have support that came from the community, but there was no government support, and that's true. That is a big difference. I had friends in Canada yeah. who got support, and it was always hard for me to imagine that they don't have to worry about these things. There was a motivation yes. that was provided by the threat of poverty. Yes. And I have a hard time now being where I am, imagining someone else having it easier than me. <laughs> but if I ever fell on a hard time, I would not be you know, unhappy to take that free money. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But you know, most guys, most guys and girls that start out are young, Juliet. So they, yes. they don't have to worry about illnesses. This is crazy talk. Well, that, that is crazy talk. But first of all, I have to say that you, you, you wouldn't have not gone into music and you know, going after your passion because that was your passion. That's what sets you apart. That's, that's why you true. became successful. That's a good point. You didn't blow off, you know, working at the accountant's uh, firm because, you, you know, no blow no offs. Blow -offs. <laughs> no blow offs here. Some blow -offs. Yeah, you get after when you no. uh, hey, whoa. Hey, whoa. <laughs> but when you, become, you became successful, you were lucky, but you wouldn't have given up, even if you hadn't been successful, right? Wait, you're saying if I had had health insurance provided for free, I would have still done it? If you had, if, if, the fact that you went after your dream, <laughs> no, the fact that you went after your dream, knowing that you weren't going to have health insurance provided to you, shows that you, what? Juliet, Andrew only prepared for one question. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize. What are you doing? Well, Greg is very <laughs> confident, obviously, he's not asking you the right question. But I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're a reporter over here. Uh. Your face is peeling off and it's creeping me out. Steven, right. Steven, let me bring you into this. Here's the thing that kind of bugs me about it. She talks about the entrepreneurial aspect of this and how by giving somebody health care, that, that somehow fosters that. I thought it's the opposite, like Andrew says, that if you give something to somebody, they're less likely to work because they've already got what they need. Yeah, well, absolutely. I, I don't like that you bash the subway performers, though. There's a guy in Montreal where I'm from who would play one flute in his mouth and one in each nostril and do the entire Star Wars theme song. If that guy doesn't deserve a free ride, I don't know who does. But I do think it's ironic that, you know, these That was these Wayne Newton, artists, wasn't it? It was. It was Wayne Newton. It was. I confused him for a chick with a pompadour. Um, I do think, though, that there is this irony that um, they, they want to flip the bird to the man, but yeah. they want the man to foot the bill. It's the same kind of trendy liberal hipsters who will move into a new neighborhood because it's trendy mm -hmm. and then bitch about its gentrification. Yeah. Here in New York. So right. That's it's like nobody's confusing you for a Harlem native Skyler. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you know, you were an original Josie and the Pussycats. Mm. And back then, nobody helped you up. No, we had to sew our own costumes out of <laughs> real pussycat bread. Right? We would find them in the alley, skin them. Oh, the howls. I still wake up to them. <laughs> that is not amazing. true, viewers at home. That is very true. true. That, that is not true. Look on my Wikipedia page. It says it's true there. Uh, <laughs> 
The thing I think was probably the only issue I really have with this is that she uses the word entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Now, someone's <laughs> strumming like a stairway to heaven on their parents' couch. <laughs> They're not entrepreneurs. Unless you're sitting there thinking about how to invent a better version of the flow beat, don't use the word entrepreneur to describe these people's dire straits. <laughs> what if he's playing the guitar but inve uh, inventing a, a longer lasting light bulb? Well, then, all right, entrepreneur. But the guitar would be more of a hobby, long lasting light bulb, entrepreneurship. God, I don't understand. What if it's the guitar that powers right a light bulb? It's because you're focused on my peeling skin. All right. <laughs> Uh, really last question to you, Andrew. Out. I will say this. I sympathize about like older musicians. Is there what what happens to them? Is there like a way that they can get? You gotta stay relevant. You gotta, yeah. you, gotta, you, gotta you gotta stay on the scene. You gotta keep working. You gotta re reinvent yourself. You gotta have fun. You gotta stay fresh. Uh, other than that, yeah, you want to rely on some kind of health insurance. There are unions out there. Yeah, yeah. hello. If, you, if you've appeared on TV, if you performed in mm. certain situations, you can get uh, health care, and I've been benefiting from that. It's a great, very reasonable price. Otherwise, I, I mean, yeah, there's Shouldn't always some way to sell out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right.